about 400 USD. And aside of the carbon pricing, it also need other measures such as CCUS are very important to uh, offset the, the, the influence of coal consumption and also reducing coal and improved energy efficiency, etc. Uh, so in the uh, last few slides, I just want to uh, have an outlook of future studies. And uh, first part is that uh, based on my studies, I think the future studies could also uh, discuss how to design an ETS that fits developing countries who will face the economic development and energy transition uh, at the same time. Uh, for example, for the uh, ETS, uh, in the developing countries, we could find that an intensity-based or the tradable performance standard market design uh, may be useful because it leaves room for the economic growth. And also, we could find that a flexible cap design, uh, which also used in like Hubei Pilot in China, uh, might be useful to deal with the uncertainties in economic growth and also the price stabilization mechanisms, such as price floors or quantity-based tools to support the carbon prices and to uh, make the carbon pricing, uh, uh, you know, promoting the uh, clean technology, the clean innovation. And aside from it, uh, several other issues uh, may also mention uh, the international carbon markets, uh, which proposed in the uh, uh, COP26 and the linkage of the country or region level carbon markets to the international carbon market would also be a very uh, uh, interesting future research area. Uh, and also the overlapping and the coordinating of low carbon policies and energy policies. Uh, in China, it would be uh, how to coordinate the carbon market with the renewable portfolio standard uh, besides the carbon uh, climate policy that would encourage international spillover of green technology. So uh, here is uh, my introduction, a very brief introduction. And thank you very much and welcome your questions and comments. Thank you so much, Bamba. Very interesting presentation. Yeah, lots of things being done in China. It's impressive very quickly. Thank you. But I think Thank that you. Edson is going to, we, we, we have time for discussion. So thank you so much. I'd like to invite Edson and Alini to their talk about the Brazilian ETS system. Or I don't know if we already have one, but <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank okay. you. I'm, I'm going to share, share my screen. Let's see if it works. I think so. I just put it in the beginning here. Okay. Hi, good morning. I think you are listening to me. Yes, good. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, good morning for everybody in Brazil and good evening from people from China. Uh, thank, I would like to thank UFMG for this initiative to promote this workshop it's it's very important for us to 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 try to 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 develop our research agenda thank monica viegas for the leading is the leading person in the in this process in this workshop so thank you monica for your time and efforts on this organization it's very important uh, for us at said the plan in our uh, graduate program in economics so uh, i i think it's it's very was very nice to see Bam Bam presentation here. My name is Edson Domingues. I am a professor of the department, and I am uh, going to present this with Aline Magalhães, also my my colleague. We have been working in this climate change, climate uh, mitigation, and environmental policies in Brazil for for a long time. Uh, we have an, our our research group here at UFMG, uh, Nemea. I'm going to talk a little bit about our research areas, our modeling expertise. Unfortunately, in Brazil, we have no carbon market to talk about, but next year we're supposed to have one. So I think it's it's good to see 
how China has done that and how the results they get. And also I can talk a little bit about our work on climate change impacts and other policies, and also a little bit about the, the carbon markets. Uh, so uh, I'm going to show some of our research here. Uh, our research group is called NEMEA on Applied Economics and Environmental Models and Modeling at Federal University of Minas Gerais. I am uh, the, 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 the leading professors here are Edson Domingues, myself, and Aline Magalhães. We have also other colleagues here and uh, around 10 PhD master students working with us in this topics. Some are related to, to, to modeling, some are related to, to climate change and policies. So uh, our main research areas in this search here uh, were related to climate change impacts on Brazilian regions. It's the, the, the top that we, we started working in the beginning of this area here. Let me just put my pointer here, yes. Uh, then we have been working with some of the climate policies in, for Brazil, in Brazil, like carbon pricing, carbon markets, and carbon border taxes. But as I told you, we don't have carbon markets in Brazil yet. We did some simulations. Aline has done this for his PhD thesis uh, some time ago. And, and we have lots of, of studies and simulations about carbon markets in Brazil. We have also worked a lot on deforestation subjects in the Amazon regions. One thing that's very important for Brazil, climate policies and mitigation policies. Uh, something about net zero scenarios, some uh, efforts some that have been studied in Brazil to, to try to reach this goal in the future. And a little bit about adaptation, also very important. Our modern expertise here at our group is mainly computable generative models, regional, national, and global models. So here, these are our main uh, uh, modern expertise. Have been lots of uh, models and simulations trying to to work on these uh, subjects in the last like ten or fifteen years here at CEDEPAR. We have done something related with input output models and some econometric exercises that we have also uh, worked in, in, in our group here. So uh, I'm going to talk about two applications that we have done two studies. Uh, one is about the low carbon economy in Brazil, some about sectoral costs and abatement potentials. Uh, uh, another study that's very, very nice that we did about deforestation in the Amazon and policies to induce zero deforestation. And something about this regional impact of climate change in family farming was a, a nice econometric study we just published about this in Brazil in the last, last this year. So about the, the low carbon economy in Brazil, as I told you, we don't have a carbon market in Brazil. Uh, we are supposed to have one to start next year with some cap and trade uh, goals related to specific sectors. We, we, we think it's going to work, but we, it's, going, it's nice to see if he, how, how it works in, in, in the near future in Brazil. But with what we have done in this type of study is, was to take into account how, how this, the emissions uh, are related to sectors and process in Brazil. I think it's, uh, everybody knows that, but our emissions is very different, for example, compared to China. Our like energy mix, energy matrix is called clean because we have lots of hydropower and other renewables in that. But still we have some uh, large emissions from energy coming for fossil fuels in Brazil, uh, for, from industry, from agriculture and land use change, as you can see here. So one of main goals in the Brazilian climate policy is to reduce deforestation in order to reduce these emissions related to agriculture and land use changes. So if you take into account how, how this uh, uh, is working in Brazil, nowadays we can try to see what is the, the what will be the cost to reduce emissions and try to do some simulation. So uh, the marginal abatement cost that is very low in the literature uh, to understand how is the relation between carbon taxes and, or carbon prices and 
emissions reductions by sectors. Then we have used our national CG model to try to estimate how much would cost to, to sector to reduce emissions and how much it is, it's going to uh, happen if we apply some price change or some carbon pricing. So we have used these models in a, in a thesis. The model is, is very detailed. We have 138 sectors, emissions by each sector, emissions by foil fuels, emissions from land use and deforestation. So we have applied this model to try to estimate this abatement cost. So it's just to, to, to have a, a look in, in the model, we have this very detailed picture of, of the energy generation and distribution. So we have we have solar, we have wind, we have fossil fuels, we have nuclear, uh, hydropower. So we have all this kind of energy generation in the model, the distribution, and so we can change uh, the carbon price to fuels or to other sources and to see how much the sectors change the, the composition and the, the emissions. Um, this is the, also the some numbers about some numbers about our our energy mix in Brazil. So we have very important hydropower uh, generation, uh, a little bit of wind and solar. This has been increasing a lot in recent years. So we have some room for for energy from bio from renewables here. The thermoelectric using coal and gas and oil are also important to use this when the when we have problems with energy from power or hydroelectric power plants. So this is the very new picture of Brazil energy system. And with this model in our sectors, we can try, we can estimate this marginal abatement curve. For example, if we, we look at livestock, you can see if the carbon cost around 300 reais would be around $60 per ton, how much emissions would decrease from the level that we have in the sector with no, no carbon price. So we, we have been estimating this, this data from lots of sectors in, the, in, the, in some papers, try to understand which sector would be more affected if they have a, a carbon price or carbon tax in, in place. So this is just one example of what we have from this model we have done in this, in this dissertation. He, here is, look, sorry for the Portuguese here, for the transport systems, we have a more steep curve is around for, for the for flight sectors or transport of or passengers and others. So this is a, a thing that you can apply this national model in Brazil. We have also used this model to, to study carbon markets. For example, we, we can put the, how much sectors we want in, in a carbon market to set a cap and trade system at, and to see how, how, how this model is going to work in terms of carbon pricing and carbon costs to each sector. So we are very, very, uh, uh, we have been using the simulations in, in lots of paper. Aline has, has done this since his dissertation. So we, we are able to simulate carbon markets, carbon prices, car, cap and trade systems in Brazil if you want. And we are going to have this carbon market in Brazil next year. So this is also one of our research area to see how much this carbon market is going to work and, and, com and compare this to what our model says about that. So this is just a picture that can show if you apply some prices of some carbon prices, how much reduction like in this, in this red uh, column here, we are going to have in each sector, how much cost would you have it, how much the, the share on emissions will happen. So we, we, we can easily simulate these carbon markets and carbon prices in our national uh, model. Um, another area of, of study that we have been working is about deforestation in the Amazon. As we, you, I, I just told you, looking at the numbers, it is one of the main sources of deforestation of emissions in Brazil. And Brazil was successful to reduce its emissions in the late 20s. In the last four years, we had lots of problems trying to control uh, deforestation. But in, with the new government this year, we, we start to, 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 to increase the, the control 
and the policies to try to control deforestation in the Amazon. So what we are, we are doing this research was to, to, to have a, a, a regional CV model uh, try, uh, built for 52 regions that are split between states and biomas. So we have the Amazon bioma, we have the, the Cerrado and other very important biomas in Brazil. And with this detailed model with agricultural products like soybean, maize, cattle, fruits, and other things, and also emissions, we can do some policy simulations, try to see what happens in this region if we try to control deforestation, how much cost it will, would impose to the regions and to the products that we export, for example, to, to, to other countries, to the soybean costs, and, and et cetera. And so we can also see uh, how much investment we would need to, to these regions to try to avoid the costs related to, to control deforestation. So this was done in a, in a dissertation that we have uh, done here at CDPLAR. And this is the model that we have been working here, this regional model with 52 regions. We have all the biomas here and also the states. So we can see a very detailed picture about Brazilian agriculture system, production, and also deforestation in this database. So just to, to, to have a, a quick look what we have done in this paper, we have a scenario where the economy is growing 2.2% per year. And with this scenario, we can see how much deforestation we have in the model. So the model would predict that we have 10 million hectares of deforestation per year from 2021 to 2040. And, and in our biomas, and we have this model saying how much deforestation we have, we can apply some policy changes there to say, uh, for example, we want to have uh, to impose a zero deforestation in, in the Amazon bioma and also put some investments there, green investments, if you want to, to say that, to avoid the losses that came from this restriction from the, the, the land factor in the region. So the model is able to reproduce how much impact you have in the region and how much it would cost the region to, to, for this policy. So just to, to, to have a, a, a look at the results, we have this zero deforestation plus investments on the land use products on the agriculture sectors. We have in, in the Amazon region, the soybean is very important, how 30% of production in the region and soybean would grow 3% due to this policy related to the base case scenario. The cattle production would reduce a little bit, the raw milk and that, that also associated to that. So we have this, this the, the increasing production in this sector. So we say, well, investment is good in the region and can avoid the, the costs from deforestation. So the zero deforestation policy is not as bad as we think, but uh, we need to take a look because the cattle is going to decrease in this region, in the Amazon region, but it can be increasing in other regions that doesn't have this, uh, they don't have this zero deforestation policy. Actually, the, the model predicts that we have more deforestation in the Cerrado region, that is the, the other bioma that is very important for cattle production in Brazil. And so deforestation and emissions would increase in other regions that are close to the Amazon. So it's one thing that model is predicting. And also it's very interesting that it is some, something that we saw this year in Brazil when the federal government uh, was controlling the deforestation in the Amazon region and the deforestation there was decreasing, but the deforestation in the Cerrado region has increased. So the model uh, was try has, has kind of predict this, this kind of movement. So it's very, important, I think, to take it, this into account. If we, we need, you want to reduce emissions from land use change, from deforestation, we would like to, to it's, it's good to, to look at that. Uh, the Brazilian carbon market that's going to be in place next year has no goal, no cap for emissions from deforestation or land use. So these agriculture sectors are not in the carbon market in Brazil that's going to start next year. So it's something that we need to also to think about. 
So uh, there is another kind of other kind of study that we have done here. I think it's it's very uh, nice to to take a look at this kind of study we've done uh, about regional impacts of climate change on, on family farming and large scale agricultural production in Brazil. This family farm, this small business in agriculture, are very important for some special and important products in Brazil. For example, beans and rice. I think that this, this family farming is very important. So we, uh, we think it was a good thing to, to look at the sectors, how they are going to be affected for, uh, uh, from climate change. So I'm going to, Aline is going to talk a little bit about this study here. I'm just going to show the slides. Aline? Good morning, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's such a pleasure né, to have the opportunity to participate of such a project. So it's it's very pleasure for me. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about this paper. This paper was published in Climate Change Economics Journal, and they uh, it's it's another important research line né, that we have been studying in the, the recent years that is related to the impacts of climate change on agriculture sectors. In, in this paper in particular, we look at the regional impacts of climate change on family farming in, and also on large scale productivity in Brazil. For this, we use a, a, a kind of cross-section framework né, that shows the process of land allocation among crops né, using climatic, using geographic and also productive factors. In addition né, to, to the, 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 this framework, uh, we use uh, a natural, né, the natural production data of crops and also temperature and precipitation. Uh, Edson, uh, uh, please, next. So this is the kind of, of data that we use in this paper, the historical precipitation and temperature to measure the, the, the changes on productivity né, in Brazil, changes in productivity on family farming and also large scale uh, areas né, uh, producers in Brazil. We use, uh, we use data from, from COPs and we use also temperature and precipitation variables uh, with another control variables né, to measure this kind of specification. Next, please, Edson. So this, this, this are a kind of economic specification and estimation in this paper. Now, this exercise indicated uh, some dummies, some variables, now, some uh, interactions, variables of interaction between the dummies and the climatic, climatic variables né, that include the temperature, that include the precipitation. And we see here a greater sensitivity of family farming productivity to climate effects. And this, this, this sensitivity is maybe related to the fact that family farming in Brazil is less intensive in capital and technology, and its productivity is more responsible to other factors, such as the climate. Uh, Edson, please. So this, this, this slide shows kind of effects on... on on regional, on region in Brazil. So given the large, large territorial né, dimension of Brazil and the heterogeneity of this agricultural production, these effects can vary, can, can be very different né, in the regions. So you see here that Northeast region in Brazil, historically the most affected region né, by adverse weather conditions is the most affected, it's more intensive, or shows most, more intensive effects of farmers, né? especially on family farmers. Uh, Edson, next, please. In, in, in such an a impact on family farmers is more pronounced in, in, in um, products, in uh, crops like cassava, like coffee, 
cassava, né, de some coffee, corn, bananas, né, and beans that are related to food security in Brazil. So on on average, né, we we see uh, most affected in this in this kind of uh, of crops, né, in most Brazilian states. That such effects would be more intense, especially in the north and northeast region. That the, so regions uh, where subsistence family farmers predominates. And please, Edson. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Aline. I thank you. Thank you. Was the last one? This kind of study, I think it's it's very interesting because we are also talking about in Brazil adaptation. How we are going to adapt this crops to the climate change. So it's another uh, type of, of research that is very important in Brazil nowadays related to climate change. How are we going to adapt these crops and the, and the and other things to the climate change? So uh, two last things that I'd like to know, we, we are also working up with some international or global issues related to climate change. We have been using uh, this the uh, global CG model for this uh, subject in, in some studies. We, we have been using the, the GTAP model, Global Trade Analysis Project. So this group at Purdue University, they provide us this very nice detailed database about uh, a, a group of countries, products, and sectors. So this database is very rich. We have also how to use this database in global CG models. For example, we have a model that is dedicated to energy use and energy and emissions, the GTAP E. We have also been working with the GTAP power model. That was one model that is, is related to, to, to this transmission and energy distribution, oil, uh, nuclear coal and gas use, hydroelectric power, and etc. So we think these two models are very good to use if you are talking about global issues related to climate change, like for example an international and global carbon market or some international uh, policy to reduce oil, fuels, consumption, and other things related to that. So, so we have been working with this, this model. We have this, this database here at our research group. So it's one thing that we are uh, working uh, in the recent years. So talk a little bit about our current research on, on climate change and, and environmental policies. Uh, the, 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 the federal government has, has just started some green investments policy, try to what they saw, uh, they say to recover our industrial sectors from recent years. So they have a mix of investment policy with green and investments, and they try to put that on the, on the public agenda to see, uh, to, to see some results. So it's one thing that we are or we like to, 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 to work and look at. The Brazilian carbon market, as I told you, is going to begin next year, 2024. It's a cap and trade system with some selected sectors. And I think similar to China, we probably are not going to see too much uh, emissions reductions here, or maybe uh, uh, some, some results in the near future, but is now a, a good thing to, to see how it's going to work. Deforestation is also a, a big issue in Brazil related to, to climate policies and also one thing that we are working on that. And uh, I, I put here the net zero scenarios. We have been working in two projects with some uh, research groups from the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. They, they are the experts on energy strategies, energy mix and energy economy. So we, we have been studying how Brazil could uh, fill this, this scenario of net zero emission in the future. And we see that it, it's not going to be easy. And to, to try to accomplish that, Brazil is going to, to look a lot to biofuels. So it's very important in Brazil uh, nowadays. And we think for the net zero scenario policy in the future, we are going to rely on a lot on biofuels. We have also a project uh, to study the biofuel marketing as a global market and between Brazil and not United States. And also it's a project we have been working with the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign, and myself and other 
researches. Uh, and and last thing, uh, the bioeconomy in the Amazon is one project that we have just finished between uh, uh, related to a, a very large study from WRE, World Research Institute Brazil. Then we are trying to see how much this so-called bioeconomy in the Amazon can be a, a, a useful strategy for reducing emissions and deforestation in the region. So we have been working with Federal University of Pará in the north side of Brazil to try to uh, study this, yeah, also this is strategy related to climate change. So this is my final things to talk. Thank you very much for your attention. I can send you all my, my, my email and comments. Thank you so much, Edson and Aline, for your talk. I think uh, uh, very interesting points, very different stage that uh, Brazil and China are in terms of the environmental policies. And I think that this partnership can be very productive for for us because China is, is in, ahead of Brazil in terms of the environmental policies regarding the carbon markets. So we in very different types of politics. This is interesting because uh, I think that uh, Brazil sometimes, I'm, I'm not an expert in this area, so I'm just uh, commenting as, 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 as uh, uh, someone who is interested in the field, but I'm not an expert. So uh, I would like to open the, the, the discussion. So I, I think that I will start with Bamba. Uh, because I think that it's more interesting for you to have time. And then after after the discussion, then we open for the panel. Okay, Bamba, please. Okay, thank you, Monica. Thank you, Professor Addison and Professor Alina. Uh, it is a very impressive talk. Uh, and I think you, you have a very great group. Uh, I believe it, it, it is a large group it, because it could run uh, such complex model. Uh, personally, I uh, I do not have a, a, a CGE models. So I think it is complex and need a very large group. Uh, and I really appreciate your work on that. Uh, I only have some experience in working with uh, colleagues that uh, um, run the CGE, uh, and especially uh, at the uh, initial stages when the uh, carbon market was designed uh, in China. And um, so uh, from your talk, um, I uh, have, I think I have uh, one question to Professor Epson and also one uh, for Professor Adeline. Uh, the first question is, uh, is about the uh, ETS because I, I am interested in this topic. And uh, I think your work uh, on the uh, MAC curve uh, is very interesting and very important. Uh, and my, my question is, uh, is that uh, how many sectors are planned to be covered by the Brazil ETS in the next year? And are there, uh, you know, uh, diversities in the MS, MAC between these sectors, according to your research? Okay, thank you for your question. Yeah, I, I'm not sure, but I think we are, we have around 10 sectors in this Brazilian carbon market to, to, to beginning. They, they, they are more related to, to industry sectors like uh, steel, cement, I think, and other mm -hmm. things related to energy. So it's mm -hmm. not a very large group of sectors that are in the policy now, but they, they have a plan to, to expand the, the sectors and also mm -hmm. like to include some things like meat in the process, in the, in the sector, in the market in the future, but because they think it's, it's easy to control emissions if you go to the meat plants, then if you will, instead of going to the farmers, so it mm -hmm. could be a very difficult to control farmers to, to have this policy, but it would be very, it, it'd be easily to control the meat production because they are very concentrated, like 10 big plants in Brazil, if you look at that. So so the, the problem is the, the carbon market is it's, it's going to start very, very, is slowly and small in the beginning. I think just around 10 sectors, not much 
much more than that. And also the, the cap that they are going to, to implement is not very high. So maybe it's, 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 I think in China it was the same process too. To start in the small market, a small number of sectors, then trying to increase that in the future. So I don't know if Aline has more details about this carbon market in Brazil. It will, so it will be a voluntary uh, addition from 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 the sectors or or uh, no, uh, a mandate. No, it will be a mandate. Not, yeah. it's a yes. uh, It's a mandatory. Yeah, it's mandatory. Yes. Mandatory. Between the sector that they are put, that is will be mandatory. Yes. Okay. And I Especially think... for the industry sectors in Brazil. Yes. In Brazil. So yes. Chemicals and cements and steel and manufacturing. And and one thing that I think it's interesting for from our point of view, they have doing these studies related to the carbon markets in Brazil using CG models for a long time. So the more than ten years is studying how to implement this marketing using CG models and all the, the other models. So in the in the end, have, they have published out some papers about that. And so uh, I think the, the models help it a little bit to, to, to try to see the best strategy to, to build this carbon market in Brazil. But they are really going to start in a small scale. I think it is already impressive because you started from you may start from ten sectors, but China now only have one sector, <laughs> the power sector. So okay. it is already impressive. And I, I also heard from my uh, friends uh, from the ICAP organization, uh, the International Carbon uh, Action Partnership, and he said that uh, Brazil is uh, in a big progress now uh, in terms of carbon markets. And, and I, I, I'm really happy that I could learn from your research about, uh, about this area. Uh, and uh, I also have a question to uh, Professor Alene uh, for your impressive work. Uh, because personally, actually, I use, uh, in terms of uh, methodology, I use more in econometric models. And so I think that your work is uh, very impressive. So I, uh, I hope that, uh, I wish we could have more time uh, for you to introduce this research. So I have a question that, um, so it seems that, uh, it seems that uh, you, oh, sorry. It, it seems that uh, uh, you assess the impact of climate change on the family farm productivity. And so, uh, have you considered? Uh, so, how do you, how did you consider? You know, the changing the temperature, for example, is it a, a like a linear design, or that you 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 study like different beings, different temperature beings, and then it has different, you know, uh, in, impact, uh, you know, heterogeneous impact, like for the extreme low temperature or extreme high temperature. So, so have you uh, taken into account of this kind of effect? Professor Bambang, I have some problems of, of my connection and my dogs that are like <laughs> loud here. So could you please uh, repeat for me the, the beginning oh. of the, your question? Yeah. Oh, sorry. So my question is sorry. that, have you considered the heterogeneous effects of uh, different beings of temperature? For example, there may yeah. be different impacts of extremely low temperature or extremely high temperature. So have you uh, yeah, considered yeah. this kind of effect? Yeah, we use, use like, like a, 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 actually we split the, the econometric specification and uh, between the, 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 the phases of the year. So the, the winter, the summer, and also we see we we consider uh, some heterogeneous conditions on precipitation and uh, temperature by uh, from. Yes, and I, I think climate data. So yes, we we consider some heterogeneous uh, data. On this kind of specification, econometric specification. Yes, that's a good point because there there is a lot of 
heterogeneity in the, the in the crops relate to temperature and to precipitation. We try to put that in the model also. And also our two scenarios that we have for the future, the 4.5 and 8.5, also we have the mean temperature increasing and also the, the extremes, the low and, and the high temperatures in the scenario. So this is very important also to have the impact on the on the crops in the, in the in the in this type of model that we have built. So we try to put much the, the, the much of the detail that we have from the data, and also we know some crops are more are more related to this to the to the extreme events, so extreme temperatures. So the model, the data in our model try to to, to cope for that as as possible. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, so uh, another word that I just want to say is that uh, I appreciate the works uh, very much, and I believe that we can find like common interests uh, in not only the carbon market, but also that we could learn from you uh, a lot for like the deforestation policy and uh, also the land use policies. And thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And so, and uh, I would like to invite Ed Sonia Alini. Uh, oh. If you have any questions to Professor Bambam, please. Yes, I have. I have seen uh, one of your slides. We were talking about this yesterday in, with a student. I will just take some notes here. You you said that the, the carbon markets have like had some limited ability to inducing clean investment and innovation. So this is a very big issue nowadays for the. The Brazilian perspective, because our the federal government is trying to put a investment plan to industry related to innovation, to green innovation, and and they are they are looking to that as a, a as a key issue and a key policy to to induce growth and induce reduction in emissions. How what can you say more about this this type of results? Because it seems that the market is not. Like limited ability to, to do that. What do you, you think is why is that? Okay, thank you for for, for the question. Uh, it, it is a very important question, uh, and uh, actually, at that slide, I only uh, list two two opposite side of views about the role of carbon pricing. Uh, so uh, some guys, some researchers believe that maybe there would be limited uh, role of carbon price on the green investment. And we we also uh, seeing such kind of researchers using uh, you know different empirical evidence around the world, uh, but for the uh, experience from China, uh, actually, uh, uh, like one of the research uh, publication I uh, put it in my slides is that in China most of the re research found that the Chinese carbon market would have a positive role on inducing the green innovation not only from the uh, you know, uh, industry level, but also have many evidence from the micro level for the covered firms. And personally, I also have a research uh, uh, published on the climate policy uh, that uh, I, I do something, uh, combine the uh, econometric models and the simulation models. And I find that with a certain level of carbon prices, uh, it would be benefit to uh, green technology and uh, also the R&D uh, at the industry level. Uh, but there is a you know, very important point for the carbon price to induce uh, green investment or green innovation is that the carbon price should be at a certain level, not, not very low, and it should be high. And it should also be uh, not that, you know, dramatic uh, spikes or falls of the carbon prices because you have to uh, provide a quite stable and quite strong price signals to the market is that you will carbon price and you will uh, you know pricing for the you know fossil fuels it's, it's just like pricing for the fossil fuels and this price signals should be strong and stable so that means that when designing the carbon market uh, one should have some you know, institutional design uh, that we called a price stabilization mechanism to support the price. Because in the carbon market, the supply is just you know, created by the 
the government is the allowances the cap. And then it is uh, inflexible because the cap is uh, something like already set. And then the demand may be, you know, may be high or low and may even be have some unexpected situations. And so that means that uh, the prices, which the outcome of the, the supply and the demand might be spikes or falls, and this may not be good. So uh, in the market design, it, it would be benefit to have some, you know, like the price corridors, for example, the price floor, and or some other kind of measures. For example, the EU ETS uses uh, some quantity-based measures called the uh, mark market stabilized uh, reserve, uh, something like that to support the carbon price uh, to avoid a, a very large, you know, especially a very large force of the carbon price. So that would be very important uh, for a carbon price to induce green innovation and investment. Okay. Oh, very, very nice. Uh, uh, so just as you were talking, is this price corridors in effect in China in the carbon market, so they have this price guarantee as a floor and a ceiling, or it has mm -hmm. been they are using this a lot, or just sometimes how the markets was operating. So you mean in China? In China, yes. Uh, so actually in China, uh, the pilots, some pilots have such design, but not all the pilots. So, uh, and okay. for, for example. Sorry, I, I understood that it's not yet implemented, né? totally implemented. Yeah, it's not implemented in the national market and mm -hmm. it, it, it implemented in two pilots in China. I mentioned that China have uh, like seven pilots mm -hmm. and in the Hubei pilot, which, which I participated in, we have a similar mechanism. Uh, a similar mechanism, but not a very standard design of, of the price corridor. Uh, but for the, uh, but actually in the academic, uh, Chinese scholars are, you know, um, studying the price corridor. So different implementation of price corridor is under discussion, I would say for the national market. Uh, but we do know that uh, when will, you know, this kind of design be really implemented in the national market. But from the academic, actually, we learn uh, a lot from such discussion. And also for the US, the uh, REGI, uh, uh, the, the California uh, cap and trade, they benefit from the price floor. Uh, but not all the, you know, um, not all the government or the scholars like the idea of, of a kind of price corridor because this kind of price management may be, you know, maybe make the market not like a market, like that the government will regulate the, the price. But actually from the environmental economic side, it is just to, you know, make the vertical supply chain mm -hmm. uh, to be more flexible. For example, price, the price for the corridor is like to make the vertical supply chain like to be, to be like this. So mm -hmm. it's a, add some flexibility in it. And in the EU, they do not like the idea of manage the, the, the prices. So they use a quantity-based one like MSR, but this uh, market all benefits from different types of price stabilization mechanism. Okay. Thank you for your answer. Very nice. Uh, just another thing that I was going to ask you is because in Brazil now we have this policy for renewable energy, like solar generation. So well, solar distribution here is, is, it has become very important. And we, we use the solar panels from China. We do not produce that in Brazil. We are 100% importing that from China. I think it's the main source of our solar panels. We know also that China is very important on, on the batteries, the, in the production of this for electric cars and other things. So, uh, do you think that uh, would be uh, would be uh, would be good for Brazil to produce solar panels here, or we should try, or we should not try to do that because in China is always cheaper than producing here because you know China is very competitive and the price is very low for solar panels there. 
what do you you, you have some like industrial policy to 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 build this solar panel sector in China? How was it done? If you know something about that. Um, I think very interesting question, and just unfortunately, I'm not an expert on this, you know, solar panel. So I just talk about some of my personal idea. I think they are all determined by the 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 law of the international trade. So yeah. if China have like cheaper and uh, inexpensive products, mm -hmm. and it would be, you know, uh, attractive worldwide. Uh, but maybe in the future, because the the production of solar panel is a kind of pollution. Mm -hmm. So oh. so um maybe maybe, but I will not not say it for for certain. But when the uh, environmental regulation that might be high, I think the the you know there are some internalized you know environmental cost. So uh, we we should just see that whether when we uh, include this you know, environment cost, whether this product should also be competitive worldwide, but I'm mm -hmm. not sure about the answer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, I think if I only have- to... Professor Bumba, I have one question. Another question relates to, to regulation of carbon, of carbon markets in China. And uh, my question is really, how, how has the, the ver verification process been in China? Especially, in a, I think, because it's it's um, it's the locus is in your region. Uh, you know? so you mean the uh, monitor verification? Yeah, the of the, the carbon process. of the carbon market. Mm -hmm, yes. Yes. Uh, so actually, no matter the uh, pilots or the national market, we have the. Uh, MRV, the monitoring, reporting, and the verification process. Uh, so, uh, uh, the actually the the fir first the firms they will uh, have a record uh, of their uh, you know fossil fuel uh, usage, and also some of the emissions are from the production process. So, so they have the statistics of all the you know the the consumption of different kind of fuels. And also, uh, how much how much products they produce, and then uh, at the national level, and we have uh, guidance, uh, no, no matter at the pilot stage or for the national ones, we have guidance for different sectors that how to calculate the uh, emissions uh, from different sectors, from different types of fuel consumption, and from different types of product uh, process. For example, for the steel, it, uh, they may be different for, uh, you know, different production process, and for the cement, they are also different. Um, and then, um, uh, before the uh, you know compliance period, uh, the firms are required to report their uh, emissions data based on their uh, energy usage data and based on their production data, and then we have uh, several certificated third parties. And then uh, these third parties uh, companies, they are certificated by you know, the government. And then they go to the firms, go to the covered firms, and just like to, uh, something like to, to audit, audit the, uh, the, 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 you know, the validation of their data and helps them to, you know, calculate the emissions data again to 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 see that whether this is true so this is the process of verification and then uh, the government will rely on the verified data of uh, firms emissions and to determine that uh, how much of the uh, emissions obligation of the firms in the past year and to determine you know the the, the allowances allocation in the next year Thank you. I don't know. Okay. Aline. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, uh, it's amazing. So, so very interesting. And um, it's amazing the exchange of ideas. I'm very happy that we can have this opportunity mm -hmm. of uh, having 
both research groups uh, talking together and preparing for our personal meeting in in face-to-face in -face meeting in, in November. I just have one person, one one question to, to Bamban, and, and then I don't know if someone else can, can ask. If you were a consultant for our Ministry of Energy here in Brazil, regarding the experience of China mm -hmm. in terms of uh, implementing the carbon market, what are the big challenges that you think that Brazil should face and what should you do different mm -hmm. and what advices would, would, would you give to Brazil Ministry of Energy to start our politics in terms of carbon markets? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Monica. I think this is a really big question yes. <laughs> for me. Really big question. <laughs> challenge. And, uh, yeah, challenge. Uh, so I think I just answered this question as a student to answer a question of uh, my professor. <laughs> so um, uh, I think the biggest challenge actually is uh, uh, described by Professor Alina is the data. Uh, the data availability and the, the data accuracy. And for firms uh, at the first stage, actually um, they may have two tendency. The first tendency is that they want to report higher than they really emits. Uh, because uh, if you like in most ETS, they allocate the allowances at the initial stage for free and many of them like to uh, uh, allocate it uh, using the history, historic emissions data. So the firms may have a tendency to uh, report higher than they really emit. And this would uh, result in, you know, the government may believe that there is very uh, high demand of that certain amount of emissions allowances, and they issue this amount of allowances this and then find it is over allocated and the price may be you know four and maybe lower than expected so uh that this was experienced by the eu and this was also a very big challenge for uh the chinese pilots at the first stage uh so uh yeah so uh if i have some suggestions uh i think uh first data 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 right so you need verification and then the second one is that you really need um, some measures to support the price. So as I mentioned, like no matter using the price force, price corridors, or using something like a central bank to central bank to reserve to hold some allowances and then to determine whether to auction them to the market. If if the price is okay, you don't have to auction them, you know. But but if the supply is not 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 uh, large enough, you can auction them. Um, and the third is that uh, I think uh, the, the China's carbon market is very special, uh, not only because it is large in scale, but also uh, it is implemented in an uh, economy that with uh, relatively high speed of economic growth. So uh, it is also a challenge to, uh, you know, predict that how much emissions rooms you need for this market. And uh, for my suggestion is that you may using like uh, something, you know, combined with an intensive intensity based design, like to, um, uh, you know, uh, leave some allowances or some part of the, the cap that are related to the economic growth or the growth of the industry. So um, yeah, th that's my attempt to 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 answer no, this very challenging uh, question. <laughs> thank you, Monica. Yes, it was very impressive the graph that you showed about the variability of the prices, and then I, I was looking at this and said, "Come on, how can this market? Uh, it's just, I have never seen so so." Um, 
usually we think about the price so stable prices and and relative price are not changing so much as as the carbon market so i think my god some something very wrong is going on on this market it's it's the sign of that the price is is is, is giving us so and i would say come on i would i don't know how 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 the firms will will, will invest on this if you have so so high volatility and and in and it was different from each pilot so it's it's amazing but you you already answered about this uh, regarding the 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 uh, corridors or floor or ceiling or ceiling uh, politics so i think that we are on our times is 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 end so I would like to thank you everybody that was here to think for our audience. It was amazing to have again uh, so many people interested on that, and I'm I'm very happy. This is this the main objective of this uh, workshop. When we 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 uh, thought about this when I was at Hurst University was exactly to do the first contact between the Brazilian team and the Chinese team. And I'm very happy that uh, Edson and Aline and Bamba, I think that we succeed in doing this. And then now I think Edson and Aline and, uh, and Bamba, you can you can change in mails and, and, and then try to uh, uh, be in touch a little bit more before our, uh, before the meeting in, in November and try to figure out about the uh, activities. I just wanted to remember that uh, they they will be here at some, uh, we will have the symposium on the 21st of November, but they will have, Bambam will have a whole day to work with you both and uh, regarding uh, next uh, research projects or, or partnerships that mm -hmm. we can do uh, together, that you can do together. So. I, I, I really would like to thank you, everybody that uh, uh, supported this idea. It was <laughs> uh, 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 and, 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 and our audience. So thank you very much, Bamba. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Edson and Professor Alini, and also for CDPLA for the support. I just would like to, to make an uh, advertisement or our next workshop and uh, that will occur in can you see my 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 screen no 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 oh my gosh And now, now, yes, you can see. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. So our next workshop will be about uh, uh, population uh, dialogues, Brazil and China. Uh, we will have population studies and pension system. We will have a uh, professor, Jin Yang Yang. He's here with us. Uh, can you open your camera, professor Jin Yang, please? To say, just to say hello. Of course, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> And also professors Cassio Turra and Simone Weimann from UFMG. They are from the demographics uh, program uh, in Brazil uh, that uh, we are together in, in CDPLA. So I'd like to, to say and to invite everybody to come to our next meeting that we will call on the 14th of September. Okay, so we skip the next week and then in 15 days so thank you so yeah. much and i don't know if anyone uh, edson alini and Baban, would you like to say some anything more or bernardo can you open this section thank you very much looking forward to have you here monica you you are sharing your screen yes, it's um uh, so oh it's a, your, your WhatsApp, it's open. Sorry. Sorry, Sorry Edson. I do like to. Oh my gosh. I, I okay. Now you can see your email. Please just stop your screen. <laughs> it's amazing. It is.
Sometimes when I, ah, I have to stop share here. Okay, now it's okay. Yes. So Bernardo, do you want to say some few words just for us to close the section, please? I don't think that Bernard is opening. Okay, so thank you everybody. And, and and see you in 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 15 days thank you professor bambam professor edson and professor alini thank, thank you, you bye. Bye. bye thank you very much thank you, everybody. thank you very much thank you. looking for, you forward much. to our next event yes bye 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 bye, -bye. see you bye. see you